Hello and welcome back to the final installment of the Hatsu Basho podcast with your team here at Tachi Ai. Joining me is Andy. Say hello. Hey. Good and morning. And I'm from or, some random hotel room deep in the heart of Southern California. This is uh, the final segment where we're going to talk about our predictions as well as the matches we're looking forward to coming up in the January tournament. Um, but first, let's start with a bit of sumo news. Andy, you reported on the site that uh, none other than Yokozuna Hakuho um, had something to say about uh, his eventual retirement. Why don't you take it away? Yeah, that was a really, really surprise uh, tweet yep. that Haruth had picked up. And um, the, well, it seemed to surprise the interviewer too. Uh, he was kind of nonchalant about, oh yeah, we're talking about um, uh, my supporter. And then he's like, oh well, um, yeah, I'm going to retire this year anyway. And the the reporter was just kind of, um, well, taken aback by it. Surprised. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, uh, in retrospect, it's not that big of a surprise. We've kind of been thinking this anyway. Uh, really, the just this last U show of his kind of, um, well, it gave a lot of us some hope that he may have uh, quite a few more um, uh, you show in uh, um, I guess in the cards yep. but uh, that that won't be the case um, hopefully he'll be able to uh, know, pick up a few more this year but um, I mean it's a very very well deserved uh, retirement and it's it would be pretty good timing i think uh not dragging it out for yeah. a really, really long time so uh no, it, it i think it's a smart move but it's also kind of the move that we've been seeing um or that we've been thinking about for a while so uh just wondering who else might be um following him into that uh um great uh <laughs> Pasture yonder. Pasture, well, in no. the um, well, it's he, like the he's, big he's gonna be staying in Tokyo, so yeah, he he's gonna be um not not necessarily going the route of Haramafuji and and leaving Sumo altogether, but yeah, I mean it's definitely a big turn. So, so. I, I think that uh, you know he'd always said that his goal was to uh, remain in Sumo until the Olympics, the Summer Olympics in Tokyo coming up this year. Uh, and it's just a natural transition for him to uh, take part in the Olympics and then step aside. Um, yeah. But let's uh, let's get down to this Basho. So far, um, all of the workup has been a bit surprising to me because it looks like many, many rikshi are actually going to be able to start in a fairly healthy condition. Whether they can pull all 15 days or not is a big and uh, remains to be seen question. But I'm very excited, not the least of which because I'm headed, uh, I'm headed to Tokyo the day after tomorrow to watch the first seven days of the Basho. But um, because this could be like a big tournament like we last saw last year where everyone was healthy and everyone was slugging it out all the way through. But uh, we, we have some really interesting matches coming up, a, a bunch of which could happen in the first week. So Andy, one of the ones you picked out was, was Enho versus Tochi Notion. Um, yeah, which is sort of the ultimate big man little man contest. What do you think? Of, yeah. what, what were your thoughts there? Well, I um, when I was thinking about bouts for this upcoming uh, tournament, I, I wanted to think of um, some great contrast bouts. And yeah. the first, like the one contrast bout that really, really sticked out, stuck out in my mind, um, would be the uh, Enho versus Tochino Shin. Um, the possibility of that bout will be it'll be very very interesting to see uh, Tochino Shin the in his strength against such a small agile competitor like Enho. Um, I'll be very very curious because it's something where Tochino Shin is not gonna have to be uh, necessarily as um, reliant on the on the sky crane. Uh, yeah. Well. He will not be. He will not necessarily need to uh, worry about his knees for that sky crane, um, <laughs> but he will probably need to worry about like 
just yeah getting well not as much load but but he'll need to get down further so it might be it might be an interesting um well i i think it'll be an interesting bout to see some fun uh, mechanics and, uh, yeah i i think that it might see a throw in there but i'm not sure who's gonna get thrown so um <laughs> so the first that'll be, one that'll be interesting so the first one i have to bring up and it's uh it's pretty obvious, is the rematch of Hakaho versus Endo. Um, you know, Hakaho's got a 12-to-1 advantage over Endo, but uh, there's some special spicy sauce on this, on this rematch. Um, and I, I have to wonder if they're going to save it for week two or if we're going to get it as a as special seasoning in week one. Andy, some thoughts about the rematch. Oh, there's definitely going to be some drama and i don't think it's gonna uh just necessarily be only endo um i i think that with so many of the oite kaze um guys up in Maku, makuchi now uh dae show is there and so that'll be another one where um the the same kind of drama i think will possibly be playing out there but um yeah after well i guess the Enho, I mean, Hakuho's interview started off all about the supporter and those uh, those elbows and yeah. whether there's anything necessarily hidden in there. And so I, I do think that we might find out um, a little bit more the the next chapter of that little drama uh, early on in week one. It'll be pretty exciting. So I also think week one we're going to get a, a veterans battle, which should be pretty awesome, which is Ikioi versus uh, Tochi Ozan. I mean, both yeah. these guys are high skill, um, long serving Makauchi regulars, and you know they have the potential to put together quite a match. I mean, it, my two nostalgia bouts really are Ikioi Tochi Ozan and Teranofuji uh, Ichinojo. Like those are the two bouts that. I, in in each case, we've got um, guys who have been coming off of injury, uh, one very serious, one that has just been plaguing Ikioi for a while. Um, well, and Ichinojo also with yep. his back. Uh, and Tochi Ozan coming back up. Uh, yeah. it, there's, there are four really, really great competitors there that – are uh, n- not quite where they were two years ago, but uh, it should be it should be a couple of great matches. Okay, cool. So. Um, another one I'm looking forward to. I think we may get um, in the first week uh, Takayasu down at Ozeki Waki versus Hokuto Fuji. Those two I think are matched at eight wins apiece over their career, um, and you know what a what a brawl potential there if Takayasu is actually Genki, which he seems like maybe he might be okay to fight. And if so, wow, just uh, those two are gonna are going to throw the kitchen sink at each other. Yeah, it'll it'll be very very. I'm I'm willing to bet that that's not going to be a Yotsu battle. Um, <laughs> I think that it will be uh, a really really pretty big uh, Oshi battle there. And I'm gonna have to give the edge to Hokuto Fuji probably because oh, so? uh, I think he's gonna be gunning for for his own like his own uh, um, uh, Sanyaku slot back. So <sighs> that'll be an inter- that will definitely be an interesting. Yeah, because both those guys are big. They're both fast. They're both hugely strong. Uh, I just I hope neither one of them gets hurt. That's my biggest yeah. hurt. My uh, biggest that, hurt. That, yeah, no, no, that I I echo that sentiment as well. I mean, especially with both of those guys, uh, love to see both of them uh, staying up in Sanyaku for a little while longer. So you picked well, out uh, uh, for okay, yes. yeah. yeah. So you picked out Tsurugishu versus Koto Shogiku as another one of um, your high interest matches. Tell us some some about that. Yeah, I uh, this was um, I I really along with. A couple of contrast bouts. Uh, I wanted to pick a couple of strength versus strength bouts. Yeah. And and so Tsurugi show with with kind of a um, Kodoshogi Tsurugi show going up this way and Kodoshogiku coming back down. Uh, but the it's 
it's really both of their strengths. And so yes. there's, I don't know, in that bout, it's kind of a contrast in their direction, but uh, it, it's, it'll be a very interesting matchup since they're kind of meeting in the middle there um, of two strengths. And so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that bout uh, so, as well as I guess, on, on the flip side, uh, Yutakayama versus Oyama, Aoyama. Yeah. Um, with the the Oshi strength versus strength. So um, so I, I think with so many of the old time favorites back in the top division, I'm going to hope and pray to the great sumo cat of the Kokugi Khan that Koto Shogiku's knees are in decent shape for at least the first ten days, and we get to see some strength out of the uh, out of the former Ozeki. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, his his knees have been. Um, Definitely not where they need to be in order to. They, they haven't. He's not been really able to get anybody over the pile, like yeah. over those um, those straw bales. He can get them to it, yeah. but as soon as they get their heels on there, uh, he's needing to. Um, I guess find a new new bag of tricks where he's actually having to throw some people uh, in order to win. Um, and when he can't, he doesn't, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, ho- hopefully here we've got experience versus inexperience, um, but two strengths going at each other. Um, and I'm hopeful that that one is going to be, uh, yeah. well, I've circled that one. I think that'll be a good matchup. I think it'll be a great matchup too. Next one I had was Mataki Yumi versus Asano Yama. And the reason why I like this is you could almost call this a grudge match because Asano Yama is now perched in what had been Mitake Yumi's spot for oh so long, and Mitake Yumi is now back in the rank and file with a, a, a giant wall of very ginky youngsters to fight through to get, even get back up to Sekiwaki. And uh, um, Mitake Yumi holds a four or 11 to 4 career lead over Asano Yama. Even though Asano Yama has got, you know, some. some vastly improving tournament by tournament uh, sumo going on. I think if Mitake Yumi can get, can get us ahead of steam going, he, he could really be uh, the man to watch this time. Oh yeah. And especially if he can keep Asano Yama off his belt. I mean, yeah. I think Asano Yama might have like a, a 50, 50, shot if if he's able to get on Mitake Yumi's belt because uh I mean Mitake Yumi it, he's comfortable with Yotsumo but he's much more comfortable I think with an Oshidashi whereas um yeah. Asano Yama he he really relies on that belt and yes. so if if Mitake Yumi can stay away from it um then he'll uh he'll probably Get away with it, and and so I'd give him, I'd give Mitakeumi probably a 60-40 edge if if it's um, if he's able to stay away from Asanoyama's belt. So you mentioned this a bit ago, Yutakiyama Aoyama as one of your picks. I mean, Big Dan yeah. and the V Twin versus uh, versus the resurgent Yutakiyama. Talk about it a bit, Andy. Oh yeah. Well, I. That's the thing. Aoyama has been, um, over the last year or so, he's been kind of uh, bouncing around. And and I think both of them are in a flux of seeing where they're going to develop. Um, yeah. Well, whether Yutakayama is going to be able to uh, come back from his little setback and and rise up, um, or whether Aoyama will be... Aoyama was, I think, back in Juryo last year. Um, and so, I mean, he's had his own, uh, his own injury struggles, but both of them have that, I mean, they both have the size, they yeah. both have that, um, uh, Oshi battle going. And so I think it, this is another case of strength versus strength and two really well-matched guys, um, in, in a, uh, in, I think the battle that both of them want. Yeah. So it will be a very, very interesting battle for us to watch. It will. Uh, next one I had was Takakesho versus Kakuryu. Um, I mean, Kakuryu, Yokozuna Kakuryu holds an 8-2 to two lead in that series, but I have to think that I, I worry that Kakuryu is a bit fragile this time out, and I have to think that Takakesho is 
I feel pretty good about him getting his eight, but I think he's going to pick up a couple of interesting wins that may help um, advance his cause, for lack of a better term. Thoughts about that kind of matchup, Andy? Yeah. I mean, for that matchup, I think personally it's just a great sign if it happens. I mean, I would love to see Kakaryu around uh, for the final um, weekend, and I think that that matchup would probably be happening uh, Friday or Saturday. Yep. And so that's one where Kakaryu um, will hope, well, hopefully both of them will be competing for a U show or will be in contention um, along with Hakuho and it'll make for a very, very exciting yeah, I, weekend. I, I, yeah, I think that will make for a great weekend. So you've brought this up every time we've, uh, we've shot footage for, for Hatsu, uh, Ichi Nojo and Terra no Fuji. I, mean, yeah, I think everyone I, can't wait to see that one. And I'm very eager to see if it happens. Um, and I'm not sure. Happen. The schedulers will make it happen. And, and I hope that they'll do it early on. I hope that they'll do it early on, maybe Wednesday. Uh, I don't think that, that they'd throw that out there. I'll take Wednesday. Um, I'll be there. <laughs> that, it, it, that would be really, really, really exciting. But uh, reports coming in from training is that, Ichi, or that Terra no Fuji is really, really just bursting out. That he's, uh, he's locked and cocked and ready to fight. I mean, he was calling out. Uh, he was calling out top division Rikishi during this, during training. So I, I think he's. I hope he can keep his his knees in order. But he seems like he's ready to fight. Yeah, I'm very eager to see what he can do on a 15 day schedule. Um, yeah. And and that's why I really really want to see this early on in week one, uh, before both guys kind of. We'll probably get tired. Um, yeah. Both of them coming. Well, uh, Terno Fuji coming back, obviously, and Ichinojo coming back from his own injury. So uh, easing in. Well, I guess getting that bout out early um, would not necessarily be easing them into a 15-day schedule. Um, so <laughs> I, I think that the scheduling be, committee are sadistic that, bastards. You know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, well, and and that's why, like, I yeah, I hope they get that one in there, and I hope they get that one in there early, okay, so that we can we can enjoy two guys, um, still healthy. So, uh, okay, we'll we'll finish up with the uh, with the last of my picks, which is Abi versus Guido, uh, which I think will be really interesting because you've got Guido's tendency to attack rapidly at the Tachi eye versus Abi's you know double arm attack strategy um, straight out of the Tachi eye, and it will come down to who who hits first, I think, and it'll be over in a flash. But uh, Abi leads the, or Goya leads the series three to one, and the last time these two actually fought was September, so they didn't fight at all during Nagoya, or not Nagoya, during Kyushu. So uh, any thoughts on that one, Andy? I've got my fingers crossed that it happens yeah. um, because we saw some news from Haruth today that yep. Abi might have tweaked his knee. And then Goedo obviously has uh, his own um, ankle issues. I think that that would be a very, very exciting matchup. But I, I would give the edge to Goedo um, if, if his ankle holds up. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive into uh, our always regrettable predictions. Um, this is the point where we sometimes make fools of ourselves. Andy, let's have you go first this time. All right, Asano Yama Yusho. Oh and... yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would be you know, awesome. I I think that uh, yeah, the I'll be very happy if the Yokozuna stay around for the whole yep. two weeks. Um, and it has been a good thing that they had a very short Jungyo and were able to, uh, I guess, get a bit of rest. Um, but I think that Asunoyama is the strongest, or at least the healthiest, of the Sanyaku right now. Yeah. And uh, he's 
nearing his peak, I think, um, probably in the next year or two, maybe, uh, before he reaches, um, I guess, his his uh, peak ranking. And so I, I think that this is yep. um, this is where he really needs to start turning it on. This is his breakout. Um, yeah, and it, it'll be pretty. He, he's already gotten his, his first U show, so uh, it'll be interesting to see him get another one. Sure would. <clears throat> so and okay. Then, Anything else you want to predict? Um, I think Takayasu falls further down the bonsai. Oh, oh no. Unfortunately. Yes. Unfortunately. All right, I'll dive into mine. I predict that Takayasu will get his 10. He will return to the Ozeki rank for Osaka. Um, <laughs> I predict that Asuno Yama will be Maki Koshi, and <laughs> he, will, he will fall down to Komosubi. Uh, I think this is going to be a big basho where the, uh, the old giants are stomping around and crushing noggins, and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to end up with some really terrible records, and I believe it's going to be a Yokozuna Yusho, and it may okay. come down to um, Senjuraku final match. Which that would be, would, that great would be very exciting. It would be ultimate well, fan and service. Thing, I, I would really, I would be very, very happy if all of those things happen. I'm just <laughs> not so confident in that happening. Okay. And, I mean... I, I'm kind of, I guess, I'm very curious about especially the, the Degeko news that comes out um, and how real uh, no, Degeko real. matches are. Nah. Because I think that regular day to day Keiko is, um, that's where the real practice is. Yeah. And then. Uh, it seems like on on these um, external ventures, there's uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of ability to shit. kind of exchange tricks and stuff, but yes. it's not like you show up at somebody's house and exactly you don't you don't want to show up at somebody's house and beat them up. Yeah, so I think that there's yeah. Okay, so with that, we're going to uh, conclude our podcast coverage for Hatsu. Um, it's on to the Basho just a couple of days away. I will be in Tokyo for the first week. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us on uh, this lead-up to what I think is going to be an exciting tournament. Uh, say goodbye, Andy. Bye. And uh, remember, everyone, for Sumo, it's Tachiai. Tachiai.